All right, welcome back to the channel. Um, this will be a five minute crash course on p-values, everything you need to know in five minutes. Um, stay tuned to the end where I'll summarize everything and provide some great resources where you can learn more about p-values. So what is a p-value? Let's play a true or false game. All right, so first up, p-value is the probability that the results were produced by random chance alone, false. The probability that the observed hypothesis was true, false. It indicates a strengthy association observed with a small p-value indicating a strong association. False. A p-value is a measure of consistency between the null hypothesis and the observed data. True. A p-value is the probability under a specified model that the result, maybe the difference in blood pressure between two groups, uh, would be equal to or more extreme than its observed value. True. So this probably wasn't what you were thinking p-values were, and which is why I think this is so helpful. So let's keep going. When we're thinking about what a p-value is, we need to understand a little bit about probability. Fortunately, the definition is pretty simple. Anyone who knows me knows I love candy. So if I were to look out on this table and close my eyes, I could ask myself, what's the probability of getting a red jujube, -jube, my favorite color, versus any other jujube? -jube? So what is the definition of probability? It's the ideal event divided by all possible events that could occur. So in the case of the candy, it would be a red jujube -jube divided by all jujubes. -jube and all probabilities are bounded from zero to one. You can't have a probability less than zero and you can't have a probability greater than one. So in this toy example, we can calculate that it is the ideal event. So there's one possible red jujube -jube divided by all possible events, five. And that leads to a probability of 0 0.2 or 20%. So, you know, what's a p-value? Well, it's a probability. So it must span from zero to one. It's also important to clarify what a p-value is not. So a p-value is not the probability your null hypothesis is true. No, no, no. You have to assume it is true to calculate a p-value in the first place. Instead, a p-value provides an estimate for the measure or of consistency between the null hypothesis and the data that you observed in your study. Maybe this is still very confusing, so let's bring it to life with a simple example. Uh, this is an example from uh, Nijim Evidence. I'll include a link in the show notes below. So you could ask the question, is it faster if I bike to work or take the train to work? So our null hypothesis is that there's no difference. Okay, that's our null hypothesis. And we could bike to work each day, and we could record the time it takes when you bike to work each day. And then maybe for the next month, you can take the train to work each day and again, record how long that took. And then you wanna compare the two to see, you know, are they different or not? And again, our null hypothesis is that there's no difference. So after we've observed all of these data, we can then use a programming language like Stata or R to calculate a p-value. And if in this case, the p-value is, let's say, a value that's quite small, then that would suggest that the data you observed are inconsistent with the null hypothesis. Said more simply, it's unlikely that there's no difference between biking or taking the train to work. So in this toy example, maybe the average time it took to bike was 35 minutes and to take the train 40 minutes. You calculated a p-value of 0 0.001. Uh, again, that's using formulas from either Stata, R, SAS, any programming language you want. And this p-value suggests that these data are inconsistent with this null hypothesis of no difference, whether you take the bike or train to work. And instead it suggests, hey, maybe the bike is actually faster. So I hope that was helpful. Um, I wanted to bring this slide back up again to highlight uh, what a p-value is versus what it is not. So as a reminder, the p-value gives you a measure of how consistent your observed data are with your null hypothesis. And in the case of biking versus taking the train to work, our null hypothesis is that, hey, there's no difference between the two. But our p-value showed us that, oh, wait a second, the data you observed are inconsistent with that null hypothesis. And instead, it sure seems like taking the bike to work is faster. Another way we can think about p-values is that it's a probability under a specified model that the result that you observed, so in our case, the difference it took to bike versus take the train to work, would be equal to or more extreme than its observed value. So I, I hope that's helpful. Um, 
I need to definitely acknowledge uh, Dr. Ken Rothman. Um, he helped to really improve the quality um, of the content and how I portrayed it in this video. So thank you to Dr. Rothman. He also has an incredible program called um, EpiSheets. Um, just Google EpiSheets Rothman and you'll be able to find it quite easily. It can help you to calculate um, other statistics and understand uh, p-values and more complex topics such as p-value function, which I have not covered here. And also a, a nice um, a paper here if you want to learn more. Uh, about p-values. I hope that's helpful. Leave any comments, questions, or concerns below and have a great day.